All right. Woo, I am on. All right. Isaiah chapter 64. Yes, 64 chapters in this book. Isaiah chapter 64, verse number 6. Isaiah chapter 64 and verse number 6. All right? Give me just a second see if you can navigate. If you need help, scream. Help! I take it everybody's got it all, the, all good then, right? Isaiah chapter 64. It's in the Old Testament. Got it? Excellent. Good deal. You guys got it? You guys got it? That's good. You got it? Oh, you're there? All right. You're doing good. Isaiah chapter 64. Okay, verse number 6. You guys have fun with the game? Yeah. That was cool, right? I've never played that game. I, uh, I wish that I would have. That still looks fun. I think I could do some strategy with that. That'd be, that'd be a good time. Isaiah chapter... Anybody, everybody there? All right, good. All right, I want you to look at it with your eyes. Isaiah chapter 64, verse number 6. The Bible says, But we are all as an unclean thing. Okay. And all our... What's the next word? Righteousness. Righteousnesses. All right, look up here. What's a righteousnesses? <laughs> all our righteousnesses. Okay, what, what is that? Good acts. All of our good acts. Very good. That's an excellent, excellent explanation. Okay? All of the good things that we can do. The, the righteous things that we can do. All of our good stuff. Okay? So it says, in all our righteousnesses, all our good stuff are as, what's the next two words? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. All right, let's pray. Lord, I thank you again for the opportunity to be here. I ask for your help. Lord, help me to preach uh, this evening. Lord, give me the words to say. Father, open our eyes to the truth of this passage, in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. amen. All right, now, I want to preach a message tonight entitled, The Aroma of Your Good Works. The Aroma of Your Good Works, all right? I used to have a, a motorcycle. Did I hear somebody has a motorcycle here? Did I hear, hear that? No? I used to have a motorcycle, and um, when I lived here, no, was it Tampa? It was Tampa. I had a motorcycle when I lived in Tampa, and uh, I would drive it back and forth to work. It was a, a Yamaha 1100, and uh, I always wanted a motorcycle. I grew up riding dirt bikes and four-wheelers and all those types of things, you know, out in the woods. And um, so I wanted a motorcycle. So I bought this motorcycle, and uh, it was red and white. I went to NC State, NC State Colors. I mean, just a whole nine yards. This was the perfect motorcycle. Had the red helmet to go with it and uh, all those different things, and just enjoyed riding a motorcycle for a while. But I found out very quickly that there's a lot of traffic in Florida, and uh, they're not looking out for me on a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And after I almost laid it down two or three times, I sold the motorcycle and uh, never rode. I haven't ridden since. Well, I have just a little bit, but uh, I don't own one uh, that I drive from time to time. But there were two things uh, that really amazed me when I had my motorcycle. One was my ability to get wet on a perfectly sunny day. <laughs> um, you guys have seen the sprinklers around here, right? Everybody runs sprinklers? You know how the sprinklers are always facing towards the grass, right? Yeah. And they never point those things, and they never get out of cycle and spread out into the road, right? Sure. I mean, you're driving down the road, right, and you're in your car, and all of a sudden you just get soaked, right? And uh, it's just whoosh, right over the windshield, so many sprinklers have gotten turned around, and they're out the facing the road. Well, you know, I'd be driving down the road on my way to work, in my work clothes, right, on my motorcycle, minding my own business, driving down the road, and just out of nowhere, I'd be soaked. Right? Somebody's stupid sprinkler head got turned around and I just get so perfectly sunny morning. I'm on my way to work and then I have to go to work and I'd be wet the rest of the day, right? And I was just always amazed uh, by that. Well, the other thing that I remember about my motorcycle are the smells while you're driving down the road, okay? You, you, you drive down the road in your car, right? You got your windows up, right? And you don't really smell anything. You might smell what's in the car, and maybe for some of you that's a bad smell. I'm not really sure. But, um, you know, we were, we were driving around in Pastor Price's car just the other day, and something had gotten on his floor mats. And I'm telling you, his, his truck stunk, right? 
I mean, and it was it was awful. And he got home and he and he put the he put the um he put the floor mats outside so that they could air out, you know, and it wouldn't, wouldn't be too bad. So that was kind of nice. But I'd be driving down the road on my motorcycle and I had my helmet on and my visor up, you know. And it was just amazing to me all the different smells of the roadway, right? I mean, you go down and you go across a swampy area and it just reek, right? Just just horrible smell. And you're like, I never even noticed that smell was there. You know, when I was driving the car, but you know, these smells, you know, I would just recognize these smells. Have you ever smelled something that was really good? Yeah. What? Apple pie. Apple pie, right? Yeah. Somebody else. What? McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's, right? Pizza that's not Little Caesars, right? Okay. Um, what else? Burgers. Huh? Some burgers. Burgers. He works at a burger joint, and he loves where he works. That's great, right? Fries. Food. What? Fries. Fries. McDonald's and fries smell good. All right, sounds like these are teenagers that are here, right? Fast food. Anything fast food. You guys, yes? Everything. Steak. Steak. There you go. There you go. got some quality over here, right? Steak does smell good, right? Um, coffee in the morning. Bacon in the morning. Oh, I'm telling you what. Man, that's food in general. Some good stuff. Oh, yeah, food in general, right? There are teenagers in here, yes. Except huh? Pancakes. Pancakes smell good, right? Have you ever smelled anything that's just... Just awful. A garbage can. A what? A garbage can. A garbage can. Garbage can. Garbage can. Garbage can. Huh? Lindberger. Lindberger. Oh, Jeez, oh, right? Oh, what? The bathroom at Wendy's. Okay, yes. There are some really bad smells. Taco Bell sometimes smell pretty bad, don't they? Yes. And uh, I'm telling you, they're, they can just be... They can just be awful, right? And we, rem we remember these things, right? These terrible smells. Um, anybody here ever been to Yellowstone? Uh, right? All right, you, you guys, you guys have been. Did you? When you went to Yellowstone, did you smell anything that was just so awful that you'll never forget it? The sulfur pits, right? In Yellowstone, like we have, we have bodies of water here, right? And uh, you know they're pretty. They put fountains in them. It's nice to look at. You go to Yellowstone, and there's these huge lakes, and they're literally. Bubbling green and yellow sulfur pit. They bubble. They're hot. There's steam that's rising off of them. And they smell like rotten eggs. Right? I mean, it is awful. Isn't it? Have you guys been out there? You can say, oh. And it's like, oh, so disgusting, right? And I remember these huge smoking sulfur pits. And just, just, just so disgusting, right? Well, God tells us something here uh, that he smells that's disgusting. And he says that all our righteousnesses are as... What are those two words again? Filthy, filthy rags. rags. Okay. Now, when we think of filthy rags, we may we may think of um, like uh, just some white cloths that we have, or some t-shirts, or maybe, and we've been out cleaning, right? And we're getting we're getting grease on them, or whatever, right? And we think we think of those types of things as filthy rags. Okay. But we kind of need to understand the culture that this was written in, in under in order to understand what a filthy rag is. All right. And this time, when somebody would die. Okay, they would embalm them, so they'd put these uh, uh, fluids on them, right, to, so, to, to slow the decaying process and to handle the smells, okay? Um, you, you've been driving down the road and you've seen a dead animal, right? Dead animals stink, don't they? Yeah. Right? Okay, well, listen, the same thing would happen to us if we died and they left us on the side of the road, okay? And so they would embalm a person. Everybody, everybody look up here. I know we're having a little bit of fun, all right? But I still want you to pay attention to what I'm having to say, all right, guys? Everybody understand? All right? Everybody looking up here? All right? So they would embalm people, all right, and when they died, and then they would wrap them in cloths, okay? And they would, they would tighten it real tight around the body, okay? Now, I want us to just use our imagination since, well, there's some grain grown ladies here, so I just apologize. We're going to be discussing for a few minutes as some young, <laughs> young men, okay? What would happen to those cloths that were wound around that body over time as that body began to decay? On the rags. On the rags. Okay, so all of the disgustingness of the decay of the body would then be absorbed into those rags. You with me? You got the picture now? Okay, so what we're talking about here when we say filthy rags is really grave clothes. Okay? Uh, the, 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 the stuff that's been wrapped around bodies after they've died and then soaked up really just all the disgusting juices and all those things that have, that have taken place there. Okay? And the Bible says that all of our righteousnesses are as filthy grave clothes. Okay? Now, 
I mentioned this last night, but there was a lot of you that weren't here last night, so I'm going to say it again. You know, as an evangelist, I travel around the country and I talk to people about what the Bible teaches about how a person can go to heaven when they die. And when I have conversations with people, like let's say I pulled you aside tonight, just one-on-one, -on -one, me and you somewhere, and uh, we sat down, uh, maybe as you were eating your hot dog or something, and I said, hey, how do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? All right, I want you to think just for a second, like, what, what would you say? How are you planning to get to heaven? The Bible says there's only one way. So how would you say you're going to get to heaven? Okay, here's what 90% of the people I talk to, here's what they say. I'm going to heaven because I'm a good person. And I really haven't done anything all that bad. Okay. Okay, now let's suppose that that's you for a minute. And you think that you can get to heaven because you're going to be good. Okay. According to this Bible verse, all of our, what is it? Righteousnesses. All of our, what, good stuff? The good stuff we can do? What's that look like to God? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. Grape clothes. What's it smell like to God? It's disgusting. Okay. All right, so let's, let's, um, it doesn't really happen like this, but let's just use our imagination for a minute, okay? Um, let's suppose for a minute, this is not the Bible, okay? This is just, we're going to make believe. Let's suppose for a minute that when you died, you went to heaven and you stood outside of heaven and, and Jesus was there at the gate, okay? This is not really the way it works, okay? But Jesus is at the gate and uh, he sees you there and he says, hey, why should I let you into heaven? And you tell God, you say, well, I should get into heaven because I'm a good person and I've really never, I've not done that much bad stuff. Okay, I, I've done, I've done good stuff in my life. What Jesus would see would be you laying grave clothes before Him and saying, "This is why. This is why I should go to heaven." Now, if Jesus saw that, the best that you had, you gave Him your best, but to Jesus, right? What did He see? He saw grave clothes. What did He smell? Rotten flesh. Okay? He smells that and he says, This is why I should let you in. Do you think he'd let you in? I don't think he would, right? The Bible says that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Now, what are righteousnesses? What are some good things that, uh, that a person could do? Would you guys help me out with this? Can, can you help me? We've been doing good, right? Go ahead. Giving people rights home. Giving people a ride home, right? Just doing good stuff, right? So, what's another example? Right? That's, that's a nice thing to do. Right? What else? Go, all right. What's that? Helping somebody, with your homework. Helping somebody with your homework. What about doing your own homework? That'd be good, right? That's good. You guys should do your own homework, right? Helping somebody else with the homework. That'd be great, all right? Um, and what else? Yes. Uh, doing things to help widows yeah. and fatherless people. Doing things to help widows and fatherless people. The Bible says that's pure religion and undefiled is to help the fatherless and the widows, right? That's a good thing to do, yes. Buy a Nerf gun and give it to somebody, right? right. Hey, what about this? Um, what about being baptized? Yeah. You know what? That, that's a good work. That's a, that's a righteous thing that, that we would do. That's something that God wants us to do that, that we could do, right? But being baptized is not going to get a person to heaven. That's a good work. What about going to church? Is that a righteousness? Yeah. Is that a righteousness? Yeah. It is, isn't it? Okay. Um, what about reading your Bible every single day? Have we heard, heard about that today? What if you read your Bible every single day from here until you died, right? And you got to heaven and God said, um, why should I let you in? You say, well, I, well, I go to church, man. I, man, I've been in Pastor Price's church, right? I went to teen revival every single year. Um, you know what? I gave money to that church. Um, that's a righteousness, right? Um, I listened to the preaching and I read my Bible every single day, right? You know what you would be laying before God? Grave clothes. That's fascinating, isn't it? Our good works are never enough to get us into heaven. Because in Jesus' eyes, they are grave clothes. And they stink. They stink. So the very best that you could do will never get you to heaven. The very best that I can do can never get me to heaven. The very best that Pastor Price can do can never get him to heaven. Right? Um, there's an interesting passage. We were in uh, Matthew chapter 7 before. You don't have to turn there, but let me just read a few verses to you there. Uh, just before uh, the passage we read about being wise and foolish, the Bible says this in verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. So these are people who know that Jesus is God, that know that he is Lord. Okay? 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay? He says here, But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, and then many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Okay? You know what prophesied means there? It's preaching. Okay? You know there's going to be preachers in hell. I'll explain why in just a minute. Okay? Here's somebody who preached and they go to hell in this passage. Let me finish reading here. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name have we not done many wonderful works? And then the Bible says in verse 23, And I, Jesus, will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Boy, there's going to be preachers in hell. There's going to be people who've cast out demons in hell. And there's going to be people who have done many wonderful works in the name of the Lord in hell. Why are they going to be in hell? Because they were trusting in their works to get them to heaven. Okay? There's going to be preachers in hell who trusted in the fact that they were preachers in order to satisfy God to get them to heaven. There's going to be a lot of people who know a lot about the Bible who are going to spend an eternity in hell because they are trusting in the fact that they have studied the Word of God and they know about the Bible in order to please God, in order to get to heaven. But you know what? The very best that we can offer, the, the best that we can give God, is not enough to get ourselves into heaven. That's fascinating, isn't it? You know, preachers will be in heaven too, but they are not trusting in themselves to get them there. Does that make sense? There'll be wonderful people who have done many wonderful works in their life who will be in heaven. But they aren't trusting in their wonderful works in order to get them into heaven. Okay? Why or what does it take for a person to get to heaven? You know, the reason that our good works stink is because of our iniquities. Because of our sin. See, everything that you do before you've been forgiven of your sins, is tainted by the bad things that you've done, the sin that you've done. And the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In other words, yeah, we may do some things good, but you know what? There's also some things that we've done that have not been good. Okay? And the Bible says we're all like that. Pastor Price has sinned. Even Mrs. Price has sinned. Now, I'm married to Mrs. Duke, so I'm not going to comment about her. All right? But you know what? She's sinned too. Okay? All of us have sinned. And the Bible says we have a there's a wage for our sin. In other words, what we've earned for our sin is separation from God. Okay? And the Bible says we'll spend an eternity in hell separated from God because of our sin. Okay? And the Bible very clearly teaches that good works, righteousness, do not take away our sin. Okay? Good works. As if we present our good works to God as the means to overcome the sin in our life, then to God those things really stink. And it just won't work. Okay? Now God knows that every one of us is, are sinners. And God loved us. And God provided a way for us to have forgiveness of our sins. He sent His only begotten Son, His name is Jesus, to live on this earth. He lived a perfect sinless life. And at the end of His life, He was crucified on a cross, the cross of Calvary. And the Bible teaches that when Jesus was hanging on that cross, that God the Father took your sins off of you. Took your sins off of you. He took your sins off of you. He took them off of you and He placed them onto Jesus Christ. And then God the Father looked at Jesus and He punished Jesus for what you've done wrong and for what I've done wrong. Okay? And then the Bible very clearly says, if you will trust, believe in, rely upon what Jesus did for you for the forgiveness of your sins, then God will forgive you and He'll give you a home in heaven. Isn't that good news? Right? Do you see the difference there? See, so there'll be some preachers that are in hell because they were uh, trusting in themselves as preachers of the Bible in order to go to heaven instead of trusting in Jesus in order to get to heaven, that He paid for their sins. Okay? And then there'll be people that are in heaven, and it's not because necessarily that they were good people, it's because they, at some point in their life they realized that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins and they cried out to Jesus to save them, that they believed in that. Isn't that neat? You know what, maybe you're here today and you've never trusted Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. You've never believed that He died on the cross and that, that when He did that, He was dying there for you. He was paying for your sin. And if that's you here today, you can trust, you can trust in Him today to be your Savior. 
He'll forgive you of your sins. The Bible says He'll make you white as snow. And then you can have an eternity to spend with Him in heaven whenever you die. It's a wonderful truth. So how does a person get to heaven? By trusting in what Jesus had done, not in what you are doing in order to get to heaven. All right? Does that make sense to everybody? I hope that it does. Okay? Now, let me just say this, because I want to be careful. Okay? Pastor Price preached yesterday, for those of you that were here. He said, um, and at the end of Ecclesiastes, the whole duty of man is to what? Keep God's commandments. That's like doing good stuff, being righteous. The whole duty of man is to be righteous. Okay? So good works, the good stuff that you do, okay, becomes very important and very satisfying to God, okay, after you're forgiven of your sin. Okay? Once you trust Jesus Christ to be your Savior, that changes everything. Because your good works are no longer tainted by sin. You've been forgiven of your sin. So now, everything that you do for the Lord, it matters. It's, it's wonderful. Good works mean something. They count for something. Okay? Uh, we could go and um, I could just share with you a few verses. I'm going to go over to the book of Titus. And just listen to these verses because they talk about, they talk about our works about people that are having good works after that they've been saved. Here's one that's addressed to young men. Titus chapter 2 and verse number 6. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. It could have just as well there said that you show yourself a pattern of righteousnesses. Okay? Good works. Young men, be characterized by good works once you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Okay? Over in... Um, Chapter 3, the Bible says this in verse number 8. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Isn't that fascinating? Okay. Now the Bible teaches that our works, after we're saved, they actually earn us rewards. That's pretty interesting. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Bible says this. Every man's work shall be made manifest. There's that word manifest. It's a good Bible word. It means to be revealed. Every man's work shall be revealed for the day, judgment day, shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire what uh, uh, every man's work of what sort it is. Okay? And the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews in chapter 6 and verse number 10, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have showed toward his name and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. So the Bible says, after you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, everything that you do good for Him, He remembers. And He's not going to forget anything good that you do. And then one day, not because you deserve it, but because He's gracious, He's going to reward you for the good works that you've done for Him as you've served Him in your life. Right? So the Bible teaches, if you trust Jesus Christ to be saved, and then you find out from the Bible that you're, follow, you're supposed to follow and be obedient in believers' baptism, the Lord's going to remember that work. Isn't that, isn't that great? And good works become good to the Lord. And He looks for those things. And we're commanded to have good works in our lives. But we're never to trust in our good works in order to earn or merit heaven. There's only one way to get to heaven and that's by trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross when He died for your sins. Does that make sense to everybody? That's really the burden of my heart tonight. What I wanted to share with you guys um, let, me, let me share with you one more verse. You know, if let's go back to that make-believe scenario where you're standing before the Lord and uh, He says, why should I let you into my heaven? And uh, in Ephesians, let me just make sure, I, let me find this verse here. I think it's Ephesians chapter 5. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 2. Um, if, if God asked me, why should I let you into my heaven? I would want to be able to give Him something if I could say it this way, that would smell good. Something that he would like. Okay. Why don't you listen about Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 2. The Bible says, Walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. You know what smells good to God? The fact that his son died on the cross for you. If, 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 you, if that scenario was taking place and, and, and you were standing before uh, the, the gates of heaven and, and Jesus was there and He said, why should I let you in? And you'd say, well, because Jesus died for me. And, and I believed in Him for the forgiveness of my sins. Jesus would say, oh, oh, that smells so good. 
you can come in. But any other answer that a person would give wouldn't smell good. It'd be filthy great. So I just wonder, what are you counting on to get yourself to have? You want to know why we do this event here? Because we love you, but God loves you. And he bore your sins in his own body of the tree. And he wants to forgive you of your sins and to give you an eternal life in heaven. Have you ever done that before? If not, you can do it tonight. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Lord, I love you. Thank you for being so good to us. Lord, we wouldn't, we wouldn't know these truths if it wasn't for your word. I thank you for the Bible and for the instruction that it gives to us. Lord, it tells us about the love that you have for us and that you gave your son to die on the cross so that we could spend an eternity with you in heaven. Father, I pray if there's a person here tonight and they've never done that before, that they do it tonight, that they would believe in you, that they just simply believe and trust, rely upon you. And Lord, I'm just so thankful that you are faithful for it, that when we call out to you, you forgive us of our sins. And you do what you say, and you'll give us an eternal life in heaven. Father, I thank you for the time we've had to spend together here tonight. And in Jesus' name I pray. I want you to keep looking down. If you would, just bow your heads and close your eyes. I just want to ask a question. And uh, to answer the question, I want you to just raise your hand if you don't mind, okay? Let me ask you this. If you're here tonight, and there's been a time in your life where you've trusted in Jesus Christ to be your Savior, would you just slip your hand up? Don't, don't, so don't put your hand up. If you're not sure, don't put your hand up if you've never done that before. But say, I've trusted in Jesus Christ as my Savior. Would you just lift your hand? Wonderful. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Great. All right, put your hands back down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can put your hands down. Not everybody here was able to raise their hand tonight. I wonder, let me ask it this way. I wonder if you'd say, you'd say this. You know what, uh, Brother Duke, I've never done that before. But I'd like to talk to somebody about that tonight. If that's you, nobody's looking around. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Would you just raise your hand up? I, you see it? I'm not going to call you in for it or embarrass you in any way. Can I just see your hand? And I've never done that before, but I'd like to talk to somebody. Yes. All right. Good. All right. Well, I see one hand. You can put your hand down. Anybody else? I'd like to know for sure that my sins are forgiven. I'd like to know for sure that I'm okay with God and I'm on my way to heaven. Anybody else like that? Jesus loves you. He loves you more than you'll ever know. This invitation is not over when I'm done preaching. Okay, I don't. If, you, if you're here tonight, you're not know. You don't know you're saved. You've never trusted in Jesus Christ, your Savior. I beg you, I beg you to talk to me or to talk to Pastor Christ before you leave tonight. Just pull us aside. We'll take a Bible and we'll show you how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven. Okay? For that one that raised your hand, I want to encourage you. I encourage you to talk to Pastor Price or myself before you leave the room tonight. Okay? Talk to one of us, and we'll be able to help you. All right? Lord, thank you for the time that you've given us this evening. We've had a lot of fun, and we've also learned some tremendous truths from Scripture. Father, for those of us who are saved, Lord, I pray that we would take it to heart, that first message we heard tonight. And we would understand that we need to be in your word every single day. Lord, that we need to be both hearers and doers of it. Lord, help us to obey your word, and help us to be taking steps in our life to be in your word and to be setting up the preaching of your word on a very consistent and regular basis. Father, I pray for one that's here tonight who's not sure they're forgiven. Lord, I pray that you give them the courage to talk to somebody tonight and they can get it resolved. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that's here. Thank you that they came tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd bless them for it. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Pastor Price.